Hello everyone, my name is Vivian and today my best friend Ala and I will be um, giving you guys a workshop. The first part of the workshop will be um, about writing and about using yourself as a main character in a story and thinking about why we write at all. Um, and the second part of the workshop will be by Ala and she will um, be introducing you to some, um, some techniques on how to draw a character and how to invest a personality in that character through art, which is, which is something she's really, really good at. Um, so just by way of a brief introduction, I'm not really sure if you'll see Allah on screen today because I think she'll be um, drawing and doing a voiceover, but I've carefully chosen these, uh, like a, a visual representation of both of us that I think is pretty accurate. Um, Allah is 21 years old. She's an artist and a university student and she's currently studying linguistics. And my name is Vivian. I'm 20 years old. I'm a writer and a university student as well. And I'm studying philosophy and creative writing. We're actually studying at the same university and um, we also studied in high school together. And we met in year seven and that's where we became best friends. Uh, okay, so to get started on our, my part of the workshop, um, I wanted to first talk about uh, how I got started writing quickly and um, and why I started writing. So ever since kindergarten, I've really liked, um, you know, just playing around with words and creating sentences that I thought sounded pretty. That was always something that I liked to play around with when I was a kid, but I didn't really um, want to write a story or have any serious reasoning behind why people write at all until I read an author called James Baldwin, who is still my favorite writer in the whole world. Um, yeah, I wanted to open a question to you guys and ask you if you have someone like this, if you have someone that um, you think about when you are trying to write um, and they inspire you to write. Um, you may not have heard of James Baldwin before, but it's, really possible that you might have actually already read him without knowing it. Um, even though his he wrote primarily during the 1950s to the 1970s, um, especially during the civil rights um, era where he was an activist, um, there's been a lot of recent interest in his writing um, because um, a lot of his words you can actually see um, at protests and at rallies all around the world, but especially in his home country in America, um, with the, with the rise of the Black Lives Matter movement, um, there's been a lot of protest literature and a lot of the um, words on signs are from the writings of James Baldwin. Um, James, or Jimmy, as he was known to his friends, he didn't just write novels and poetry and plays and essays. He also wrote a lot about uh, why writers write at all. What is the point of writing? And he has this to say about you know, his own intentions. He said, you write in order to change the world, knowing perfectly well that you probably can, but also knowing that literature is indispensable to the world. The world changes according to the way people see it. And if you alter it, even by a millimeter, the way that people look at reality, then you can change it. I remember reading that quote for the first time and just thinking about how, um, I was just amazed because I was like, that was the first time that someone that, that I had um, come across someone put into words so perfectly why I wanted to write and why the effort is worth it at all. Because I think growing up, um, yeah, the people around me, besides my sister who always loved um, reading and watching movies, besides my sister, no one else really valued writing as something that was important. To most people, it was just like something that people did for fun um, as a way to escape from reality. But here, Baldwin is telling us that um, writing fiction is a way to deal with reality and a way to take control of it and make people see your experience from your point of view. And I, I found that really powerful. So that was kind of, um, I kept that quote in the back of my mind and I wrote it in all my notebooks when I was writing my novel, The Coconut Children. On the surface, it's a story about 
uh, two teenagers growing up in Cabramatta in the 1990s, and it deals with um, issues that were faced by the, the community of Vietnamese refugees that came to Australia during um, after the Vietnam War. But, um, and, but uh, beneath that surface, there are so many other stories that seem unrelated, but that really influenced me when I was writing it. Um, one example of that is a photo essay by Gordon Parks called Harlem Gang Leader. The photo essay was about a, a real person, a teenager named, named Red Jackson. And he was the leader, I think, of a, I think of a gang called the Midtowners in Harlem, New York. It was just this uh, a collection of, of photos taken by, um, by Gordon Parks. He lived with the family for a while, I think, while, while he was, for a few months, I think, while he was taking these photos. And so there are these photos of Red Jackson, the gang leader, um, getting injured or just after a fight or, you know, or just kind of standing against a brick wall looking really intimidating. But then there are also these photos of him, these portraits of him at home and hugging his, his mother and cleaning up after, you know, after his siblings and taking care of his younger, of, of all the kids in the neighborhood. And I thought that was such a beautiful story, even though there were no words uh, accompanying it, really. And yeah, I was just really inspired by that. And I wanted to write a story that, 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 that had the effect that these photos had on me. So um, one of the questions that I had, because at the same time, while I was writing the story, I was also in high school and I was studying in English, like Shakespeare. And I remember thinking, what would it have been like to be Red Jackson and to read Shakespeare? How might he, um, how might the experiences he's had conflict or reflect or I did what with the experiences of the characters that Shakespeare wrote about. I kind of was really, really interested in that. So um, I was thinking about that a lot. So in my character of Vince, I thought about Red Jackson and I wanted to make it so that, I wanted to form the character of Vince so that he was poetic in his own way and he was sensitive in his own way, but he didn't always have the words to, to, to describe the world and that made him feel powerless. That was something that was really important to me. So in this, in one of the scenes of the, of the novel that I ended up writing, Vince is, um, he is, he does drama and he has to do a monologue from Shakespeare. He has to perform the monologue and um, he takes on the character of Caliban, who's a really famous Shakespearean character, um, who's a slave on the, on this island. And he kind of plays around with that character, even while still using Shakespeare's words. He kind of somehow in his performance, he flips it on his head just by his posture or by the way that he breathes or holds his, holds his spine tall or stares at the audience directly. Even though he's using Shakespeare's words, he, there's a reinterpretation of it. So yeah, I just want you guys to kind of think about how you know, how the different characters that have stayed with you from the movies or from the novels that you've read, how they might react if they met each other, and how all these different traditions um, kind of form our understanding of the world. So with that in mind, um, I'll move on to our writing time now. So the active part of this workshop. Um, first off, before we get to the writing exercises, I wanted to just let you know that um, everything that you write belongs to you and only you. And I think that makes it really special. So yeah, um, just know that, you know, no one can force you to read out anything that you don't want to read out or, um, uh, yeah, it's, it just belongs totally to you. And that's what makes it unique. Um, and I think there is something, even though there's, you know, when you're writing a story, it can be really cool to think about it becoming super famous and successful and being on the, um, you know, the front page of the City Morning Herald or something like that. But it's also really special to think about writing a story that you're proud of and that only, you know, 
that only you know about as well. So I guess there's two sides to it. Um, and then my second point before we get started is to know that you're in a safe and a supportive space. Um, I think every, every one of us knows that being creative requires taking risks and often failing, which is totally okay. At the end of the day, this is just um, writing exercises that we do to get to know our own uh, voice better. So yeah, no pressure or anything. For um, something that I like to do before I get started writing, because it can be pretty daunting when you're faced with a blank page, is that um, I think a really useful thing to do is to get like uh, a piece, like a page from the newspaper or a page from an old textbook that you don't like and to try out uh, block out poetry, which is basically getting getting that page and just choosing the words that you um, that you like and arranging them into a poem of your own. So that can sometimes, um, yeah, be less daunting than starting off with a fresh page. Um, but I think we can, but if you're feeling brave, we can just dive straight into our first writing workshop, which is with the first one, it'll be a poem. For now, the poem will be called I Am. And I Am poems are a really specific kind of poem, but uh, in general, I think the most important thing about an I Am poem is that it's gonna be a poem that's about you. It's gonna say something about you. Um, it's really easy, but at the same time, it's really hard because to write an I Am poem, you need to be ready to talk about yourself and who you are. Unlike haikus and sonnets, you don't have to follow um, a specific meter or you don't need it to be a specific length to write an I am poem. But the interesting thing about this kind of poem is that its freedom requires a different, like another kind of specificity. Every artistic choice that you make when you're writing an I am poem says something about you and your character. For example, if you're writing an I am poem and it's really short, Maybe you don't have that many words to describe yourself or you're a person with few words. And if you're writing an I am poem and it's really long um, and long winded and repetitive, maybe you're someone that has, that's really talkative or really is really conversational. So some questions would be, um, will you use imagery to describe yourself? Will you make your poem rhyme? Maybe that'll make you seem like a fun and um, musical person. It's basically the whole point of an I am poem is what do you want to say about yourself? Uh, there are some really, there's some famous examples of I am poems. Uh, for example, this I am poem was written by, I think, a school teacher named Jennifer L. Betts. And she writes, her I am poem begins, I am sweet and cute. I wonder about Mars. I touch rainbows. I worry about getting old. I want to be a wizard. I am sweet and cute. I pretend to have magic. I feel the air around me. I hear bells. I see dancing unicorns. I cry during sad movies. I am sweet and cute. I understand the vastness of the universe. I dream of becoming a millionaire. I say things I shouldn't. I hope to be a good person. I am sweet and cute. Walt Whitman also has a famous uh, a poem called Song of Myself. The first stanza begins, I celebrate myself and sing myself and what I assume you shall assume. For every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. I loathe and inv invite my soul. I lean and loathe at my ease, observing a spear of summer grass. My tongue, every atom of my blood formed from this soil, this air. There's a poem called I Am, exclamation mark, by John Clare. This one's a bit of a, I think a bit more of a sad one. He writes, I am, yet what I am, none cares or knows. My friends forsake me like a memory lost. I am the self-consumer of my woes. They rise and vanish in oblivious host. Like shadows in love's frenzied, stifled throes. And yet I am and live like vapors tossed into the nothingness of scorn and noise, into the living sea of waking dreams. Uh, there's more, but I think I'll leave it there with John Clare because it's a bit bit sad and there's also um you don't have to write it in uh like you don't have to make it look like a 
poem with separate stanzas if you want. There are also prose poems, which is, this is actually one that was written by Gordon Parks, who was the photographer that took those photos of Red Jackson earlier in the PowerPoint. Mm, it was in a photo essay published, um, I think in the 1968 issue of Life that uh, Gordon Parks wrote, what I want, what I am, what you force me to be is what you are. For I am you staring back from a mirror of poverty and despair of revolt and freedom. Look at me and know that to destroy me is to destroy yourself. So I guess this example of this I am poem is called I am you. So he's kind of flipping the whole, the tradition of the I am poem rather than talk about himself directly, he's talking about himself by reflecting the audience, which is us, um, just to show just to show the in inequalities in American society at that time and still today. So I will give you, I think, five minutes to write your I am poem after going through those examples of, of, the, of, of the other I am poems you probably see that there's lots of different ways to approach it. So, but I think the easiest way would just be just to write on a blank page, I am, and see what flows from there. I'll give you five minutes and I'll see you back. Uh, I'll see you back here soon. Welcome back. Now that your I am poem is finished, I'm going to try to take you on the journey to another poem. And this one will begin, I am from. Uh, this is another take on the I am poem. In, in, in an I am from poem, you're gonna be telling us about the places, the people, the experiences and the memories that have shaped you. You might use items from your home and family and tell a story about who you are or you might come, you might make yourself come from somewhere entirely different, fictional. Per, perhaps you come um, from your favorite book, uh, your favorite park, your favorite childhood memory. Um, these are all possibilities that you might want to explore. Jennifer L. Betts also writes an I am from poem. She begins, I am from the roses, the pine trees near my home whose long gone limbs I remember as if they were my own. I am from user inside voice and itsy bitsy spider. From my grandmother being a quilter who has long since passed away, the old pictures on the wall shining with the heart of our family. So I guess in my experience when I'm writing I am from poems, I find myself using less like, less symbols and more objects and, uh, trying to evoke, trying to describe a real place than, than with my I am poem. But you might come up with something completely different and you might find that your, you know, your I am from poem is more symbolic and more abstract than your I am poem. So I'll just give you five minutes to write your I am from poem. you have two poems, your I am poem and your I am from poem, maybe put them in front of you. And I just wanted to get you guys to think about the difference between the two. What did you find yourself writing about when you were writing your I am poem? And what did you guys think was different when you were talking about where you come from? In my experience with the, with the other students that I've um, done this workshop with, the I am from poem was kind of, usually it was more nostalgic in tone and um, people usually talk about their childhood or about the country that they come from, but it's more uh, things that they're unsure of. Like I remember one of my students talked about Croatia and um, even though the, that student had only been there once or twice and didn't grow up there, there is this strong feeling of connection um, that that was where they're from. And that's where, even though they didn't grow up there, a lot of their experience happened. A, a lot of their life is still, its roots are still traced to that country. 
And so I think it's really interesting the way that we think about where we're from um, and how disconnected it might seem to us, but the thread is still there. Uh, okay. So in the, I think that concludes the first part of this workshop, which is the, the, the two writing exercises and thinking about why we write at all and why, what we would want to change about the world. And in the second part of, the, of this workshop, I'll hand you over to Ala, where she'll teach you or guide you through some um, drawing ex exercises and get you to create a illustration of yourself. Hi everyone, it's Ala here and welcome to my part of this workshop. Just a bit about me and my journey as an illustrator, I first began to draw when I was about four or so years old and growing up like many other kids I loved watching cartoons and anime and reading books. But my interest in storytelling and illustration really started when I came across a manga for the first time ever in a public library. The style of mangas was so easy to follow and so much fun to read I would often end up spending all night reading as many books as I could haul in my school backpack from the library. Ever since, my passion for children's books and graphic novels has only continued to grow, and now I get the wonderful opportunity to work on my very first graphic novel with my best friend Vivian, who you met at the start of the video, all thanks to Westwood. Alright, so I think we can jump straight into today's workshop now. We will be looking at how to effectively design and illustrate yourself as a character for your very own illustrated storytelling needs. You do not need to be an advanced drawer to follow this workshop, so don't worry too much about not having the skills yet. And as with anything, drawing is a process and you can only get better the more you draw. Building a character can often take time and lots of refining before reaching the final product. But also, most importantly, you have to remember that each artist has their very own style. So if you feel like your character isn't quite as good because it's not as detailed or colorful or interesting as another artist's character designs, remember that one, Everyone has their own natural style they feel most comfortable drawing in. Two, they may have had years of experience in designing characters. And three, different art styles appeal to different people. Your audience will be unique to your style. Often, just by studying or looking at other characters can help us create our own. When you draw a character, however, try not to look at someone else's character in front of you as you draw but visualize them in your head. That way you'll end up with a version that is completely your own. You may have noticed in movies and shows that many characters can easily be described using a single characteristic. Often artists would take a character's most prominent trait and exaggerate it in order to distinguish between personalities. Where in real life, a person may be a complex combination of multiple traits. In movies and stories, a single character may have a single trait attached to them. This is perhaps most prominent in Pixar's film Inside Out. Not only are the characters named after a particular emotion, they are also designed in ways using shape and colour that reflect that emotion. We have Sadness, who is quite literally blue, with downturned brows and large round puppy eyes. Then we have Joy, who is a bright yellow, anger, an intense red colour with sharper boxy features. Disgust in green and well put together as looks are important to her. Fear is thin and a shade of purple that you may often see on the face of someone afraid. For the characters in my novel, Sylvie and the Supernova He, I've used darker colours and sharper lines to exaggerate the gloominess of the first character. So dark hair, dark eyes, a sharper nose. Whereas with Sylvie, I've used brighter tones and more rounded and softer lines in his curls and his eyes and his nose to show his kindness and open nature. For our first exercise, we'll be using an image of our face and break down the things that make us look the way we do. Having a mirror or a photo of yourself handy would help you complete this exercise. I'll just quickly upload a photo and reduce the opacity and demonstrate. First, um, I'll just start tracing over the image. If it's easier for you to just draw next to it, that's fine too. So to start off, we've got my face shape, which is quite oval. And my nose, a bit triangular. 
and then almost like a pentagon at the tip. My eyes are almond shaped with pretty prominent eyelids. I've also included my glasses even though they're not part of my face but because I wear them every day it kind of I guess kind of acts like a uniform. Then we've got the hair and then the brows that go straight and then down at the edge. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the photo for now and move on to the next step. So we have our outline of our face which is gonna help us in the next step when we try to stylize it because we have the basic shapes to work off. I usually like to start drawing with eyes first just because it helps me kind of center the face but I know there are other people who like to draw the face shape first and then include the features and that's all right too and just try to draw in a way that's natural to you so for me I like drawing like keeping my eyes quite simple add lashes if we feel like it Then I'm also going to draw my eyelids and I'm going to draw them quite arched because I feel like mine look like that and it just helps my character look a lot like me. For the nose, uh, it doesn't quite have to look exactly like your nose. It could just be a line or dots or even like a triangle. Depends on what kind of style you like. I'm just going to go with a normal line, then round it at the tip, and then for lips, I like to draw the top lip, colour it in, and then just draw a line to indicate the bottom lip. Next we've got the brows, again don't have to look exact but just the general shape and length then we've got the glasses I'll just go ahead and draw those in they're a bit difficult to make symmetrical when you don't have the reference but just the general shape is okay for a first draft then I'm gonna go ahead and draw the face shape I also like to draw big ears even though um, I didn't really have ears in that photo but I just think it makes my characters look a bit cuter. And then of course the hair. For the hair I have curly hair so generally just a couple of squiggly lines does the trick. Give myself a neck real quick and there you go. Now you have a somewhat stylized photo and drawing of yourself. For our next exercise, we're going to take that initial stylized drawing of our face and try to draw in different styles using different features and try to still make it look like it's us. Go ahead and just draw a couple more of your face. I feel like often drawing them quite small also helps in creating a better likeness. So. You want to do like a thumbnail sized illustration, that would be good. I think in my case, because my face is quite oval, it's quite hard to change that. For the stylizing exercise, you might also want to um, keep in mind that it's okay to exaggerate the features that you like. So for my second stylization here, made the curls a little bit simpler and bigger my eyes i've made them bigger and the head smaller once you're done with that just have a look at all of them and circle the ones that you like once you've done that feel free to get a fresh piece of paper and 
write down the things that you like about the ones that you've chosen. The things that I liked about these two particular ones was even though the first illustration I did was a direct trace of my face and was probably more proportional to my actual face, I feel like these two bring out more of my personality. So for the first one, the smaller face gives a more gentle appearance. So if you want to have a gentle character in your story, so maybe changing the face shape or size might help do that. I also really liked that my hair was a lot more voluminous here and generally added to the softer appearance. And these things will change depending on whatever character you're working on and what their personality is like. So if you were trying to draw a villain, for example, maybe giving them curls is not the best idea unless they look really messy, which might help make them appear scary or untidy. Another thing I really liked about these two in particular, they look more animated. Kind of gives them a life of their own. Once you've done that, feel free to keep going, um, seeing what features you'd like, maybe tweak features, see if you can make it look better. And then once you're happy with it, you can start designing the body. For this next exercise, we will be trying to draw bodies. So a lot of people struggle to draw a body proportional to the face, and that can often make a character look very stiff or very strange. The best way to practice getting better at drawing bodies is by drawing the people around us. Maybe you can ask someone to just pose for you, and that way you can get a sense of movement in your illustrations. For the body, you want to start off with a rectangle or a trapezium for the torso, and then another one underneath it for the waist and pelvis. For the limbs, you want to use either a line or circles. I prefer to use circles only because I feel like it gives the form a more three-dimensional look rather than looking flat and it also helps keeping things proportional. Once you've practiced that multiple times, you may be ready to give your body your face. For this next part, you might want to take a couple minutes and just, just quickly draw yourself using the face and the bodies that you've practiced. Don't worry about trying to get all the details in at the moment. Just really quickly draw a likeness to yourself. Once you're done with that, you should have something that looks a lot like you, but more like a cartoon character. Just keep practicing this and you can always give yourself different outfits that you wear. Maybe you can practice using a full body photo of yourself and try to draw the clothes that you actually wear. It doesn't always have to stay the same and if you feel like you're ready you can add color as well and try to draw people. That'll help you a lot with your poses for your stories and that should be it. Thank you everyone. Bye.